Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and why is there a valve sticking out of the back of that guy's head? I've wondered that since the days when I played uh, Half Life. Half Life Two, I guess, was my first exposure to uh, seeing the famous valve of Valve. Um, I don't know, but it's definitely iconic, and so is that sort of guitar riff. It, again, it reminds me of. Um, it reminds me a lot of Half-Life 2. I was going to say Halo 2, but no, Half-Life 2. Because that's the game that I played a lot in high school. Um, it was the first Valve game I ever really played. Oh, no, I played... No, Half-Life 1. What am I talking about Half-Life 2? Half-Life 1 is the game I played in high school. Wow, brain... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what we call it, but confusion. Anyway, old man confusion. Um, I'm just going to adjust my audio a little bit here. All right, I sort of screwed up my audio. Um, I, I, I'm using an entirely new uh, recording setup here, guys. The weirdest thing happened. I used to use an Elgato game capture to capture my uh, video, but it's been bugging out on me recently, and I'm contacting. I'm in contact with their tech support because I needed to record retro games, but to record off the PC, I don't. I can just record using OBS Studio directly off my desktop and I used to pass the video through OBS but I you know in going through troubleshooting everything I realized my uh, main computer is definitely powerful enough I don't know why I never tried this to record directly so we're gonna start recording directly and yeah so my audio levels I feel like are a bit high I apologize if things sound a little cap maybe I'll try one more time to adjust them here hold on Check, 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 check. Hello. Check. Check. All right, we'll see. I guess I'll just play today. We'll see what happens with the game's audio. Anyway, today we were playing Team Fortress 2, a classic video game. And I've played Team Fortress back in the day a little bit. It was never like the game I played after school or anything. So I know of it, but uh, I'm not amazing at it. Learn the ins and outs. Let's just jump into a casual match. Why not? What's the worst thing that could happen? We could piss off a bunch of strangers on the internet because we suck at a game. Never done that before. When you queue up for casual match, you will be matched into a 12v12 game based on the game modes you've selected. You will earn experience. Blah, blah, blah. You'll gain experience. Everything is like a grind for experience these days. Every game you play, it's like, you have an account. Play more game. And we will give you more game. Game? Game. You want game? You play game. You get more game. Play our game. It's like, why does, why, why does Valve care if I play this six hours a day for the next month or four hours today and that's it and i never touched it like why do they want me playing forever it's weird it's like they they want you to become addicted for some weird reason i don't know there's probably some nefarious what whatever let's just start <laughs> now correct me if i'm wrong but i think team fortress here started as a mod for quake or quake 2 or half-life one of those um, and Half-Life, the first Half-Life itself was a, it used the Quake engine, I believe. They took Qu the Quake 1 engine and heavily modified it for Half-Life, as I recall. So, in a weird way, Half-Life is a mod of Quake. And then, like, from Half-Life came, like, Counter-Strike, which is a mod of Half-Life. And also, Team Fortress might have come from Half-Life or Quake. But it's like, there's so many mods of mods of mods, you know, that came out of this one game, which... I think is actually pretty interesting. Um, and I didn't... This this wasn't a segue. This wasn't planned. But, uh, you know, if you guys have been following my channel, I'm having a modders live stream at the end of the month where I show you guys how to mod the game I've been working on, the uh, fan uh, Battletech-like game called Battle Mercs. So uh, come make your version of Counter-Strike in Battle Mercs and maybe you can make a million dollars. That is not a promise. No promises are guaranteed. Nobody's going to make a million dollars. Here's my little uh, asterisk. Anyway, welcome to Team Fortress. Okay, let's go kill some people. Capture the flag. The wind steal the enemy's flag in their intelligence briefcase and return it to your basement. I will skip this movie. Okay, here are our options. Man. Man. 
Man. Man. Man. Man. Man. Man. Or man. Um, I think they all have different s abilities. You sh this guy can s cloak. Backstab enemies for an instant kill. This is a sniper. This is a scientist. He's a ghostbuster. This guy comes at you with a wrench and grit. And with those two things, he takes he takes some mofos down. This guy has a chain gun. He's obviously the best. Um, this guy is freaking me out. He's mad dogging me. We'll keep going. This guy likes to burn people alive. He's a psycho. Uh, this guy is a soldier. This guy is just a guy. He just happened to be around when guns were flying. We're going with the big gun guy. HUD 3D character. This feature is not recommended for older machines. Well, we don't have an older machine. All right, buddy. I'm going to follow you. And we're just here to play. Oh, my God. Am I killing anyone? I think I killed somebody. That was exciting. I can't believe we encountered somebody that fast. I should stick with my my, my dudes. Because they know what's up. I, I, don't, I don't know what's up. I'll follow you, man. You lead the way. You look like a hardened veteran of combat. Is this a bad guy? I will kill you, man. Aha! Oh, that was so easy. <laughs> okay. Oh, now I got killed. I saw him. I just couldn't spin my gun up fast enough. You know what? Frankly, usually in shooter games, I die a lot faster. So I feel like that was a wild success. Um, Team Fortress obviously is a hugely, widely, crazily popular uh game um now team fortress 2 i think back when i was in high school i knew people i had a couple friends who really were into quake and stuff and i'm pretty sure we just killed two people man we're boss at this uh, i'm pretty sure they played uh number one uh because this is back when Quake 1 was out, and then they they really got into Quake 2. Um, these are some friends. So in high school, I never had a computer good enough to play anything. It's partially why I got into programming my own games, because it's like, you know, unless it was an old DOS game, I usually couldn't play it. So if I wanted to play a game, I would have to make a version of it for myself. And not, I'm not saying, like, I programmed Quake or anything. I definitely did not. But, um down buddy um, I definitely didn't program Quake or anything like that but uh, you know I made some games I made some games um, I think we got sta uh, stabbed there in the back um, but these friends who I had they all had like really good computers and I was super jealous one of them had a job at Red Lobster which I was jealous of because like when, when you're you know young in high school you have no money here my friend is working as a dishwasher easy job gets free food and he makes like a couple hundred bucks a week a couple hundred bucks a week you could be buying like an n64 playstation every single week i was so jealous i was like how do i get money so you know i was desperate for a job here i am jealous of my friend who works at uh, red lobster but anyway th these were cool dudes i liked them they had way better computer setups than i ever had and they were into like all the games they played quake quake 2 then they got into like uh ultima online and eventually everquest and stuff and, uh, oh, we're about to be grenaded, aren't we? Stick your face out, see what happens. Where'd that guy go? Where? Oh, there he is. Oh, there's another guy. You're gonna run, are ya? I think I got sniped. Good shot, buddy. Well, he's stealth like the Predator. Anyway, these guys would play, uh, like, all the games, and um, I'm pretty sure they played Team Fortress. And I think I tried it at one of their houses once, 
but uh, I was I was never very good at it. So, you know what the game changer was for me? So like my computer was always like a generation behind all my friends, uh, and I remember at one point my computer was finally good enough to play Quake One, but I didn't have a good enough internet connection to actually play with anyone. We didn't have cable internet uh, or even dial up. So um, well, that guy was he was not a good guy. So what was game changing for me is when I downloaded a Quake 1 mod at school. Because when I went to school, that's where I would have an internet connection. So I'd go into the computer lab and like download games and mods and stuff. And anyway, I downloaded, um, um, I downloaded a bot mod for Quake 1, which allowed you to put AI bots in a game. And you could essentially do this. You could play multiplayer matches. Um just against bots and it was like honestly a game changer for me because I always liked playing these multiplayer shooter matches when I went to friends houses it was just didn't really get a chance to do much of it uh you know myself come on you bastard I know you're there well he jumped in the water I think he's gonna totally come and stab me ain't he or he's gone gone forever Either way. Whoops. Whoops. Oh man, you suck, dude. <laughs> okay, let's just hide down here. I'm in the sewers. I don't want anyone to know I'm here. I guess that's not a good strategy. I gotta go into their base. Where's the, what am I trying to capture is the question, because I have no idea. I'm just like deep in enemy territory with no plan. This was a bad plan. My plan to go deep in enemy territory without a plan was a bad plan. Oh, but I got a guy. <laughs> Troll the respawn. Troll the respawn. Oh, we got two guys. I don't know if that helped the team or whatever, but I'm just here for blood. And the Leroy Jenkins of the team, you know? Everyone's like, alright, now you go west. You know, make sure you flank them, distract them. I'm going to go down the center, try and get the briefcase. I need Terry's cover. And then I'm just here like, Leroy Jenkins! Running in, <laughs> killing whoever. No plan. No strategy. No ability. Just, just doing it for the lulls. Um, and the nookie. What, what was that Limp Biscuit song? I did it all f for the nookie so you can have a cookie and stick it in my ear, stick it in my... Uh, th I feel like those lyrics are dead wrong. <laughs> Maybe they're not. I don't know. Limp Biscuit, man. Limp Biscuit and Lincoln Park, I feel like, were big when I started university. I definitely remember going to some uh, uh, res parties in the first couple weeks of school and, like, uh, hearing that kind of music playing. Man, res parties were so fun. I don't know if you guys went to university or college, or maybe you're going there right now, or you, I don't know, maybe you're young and you haven't gone there yet. But, uh, res parties were just basically like, um, where I went to university, all the residences were in like townhouses. So you'd like go and walk between the townhouses, and like people were having parties, and you'd go like, you know, have some drinks at this guy's house, and you go to this guy's house and like hang out and, it wasn't a bunch of guys. It was like parties and girls and all sorts of stuff. And it was just sort of like, it was like going into a community that was sort of nonstop partying in, in, in different levels. You know, like there might be a big house party or a chill, you know, smaller party with like just a couple of friends. And but it was all happening like house after house after house. It was so much fun. Uh the days of be young again and uneducated playing till three so we have one versus one nobody's really scored anything I don't think anyone on either side really has a plan everyone just sort of I mean if if you know I can you know offer some constructive criticism to my team at the moment they really suck they have no direction they seem to just be running into combat with no plan randomly trying to kill people and I happen to know that's not a good idea so 
I don't think my team's very good, and I'm gonna lay the current poor state of everything on them. Because why not? Look, our intelligence even got picked up. Our team is failing us. Who's this guy who's green? Okay, well, not me. Um, how do I change guys? Let's find a new game. <laughs> they keep, they're like, are you sure you don't want training? You really ought to go into training. I'm like, nah, 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 next match, next match. We're already queued for this mode. Oh, well then let's just disconnect. Then we can start a whole new search. You know, if there's one thing I know people love on the internet, it's people who just join games and randomly disconnect. Or DC, as the kids call it. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a really good thing you should be doing when you're playing online games. It will get you lots of friends. But fortunately for the 1001 Quest, we're not here to make friends. You guys are my friends. You guys are all the internet friends I need. And, you know, we're in this together, so... Um, we're just here, here today to play some Team Fortress 2, see what the fuss is all about. So this is one of the games of the book, 1001 video games you just play before you die. I'm playing it, I'm not dead yet, so I am, I do as the book commands. I'm good in that way. Um, let's see, remote detonate sticky bombs, that's too complicated for me. Let's try the rocket launcher. I like how rocket jump is part of his strategy. So rocket jumping originated in Quake, and it was sort of an exploit. But uh, He's gonna get it was, this. you know, I think good games have exploits. This is my mentality. And again, I, I'm sorry to keep bringing it up, but I've just been thinking about it a lot recently because I've been working on it. So my own game uh, that I've been developing... Uh, the battle marks thing. It actually does have a few exploits, and it's like some exploits you fix uh, for sure. Um, but there are some exploits that I know of in that game that I not only haven't fixed, but I don't plan on fixing. Um, because in my mind, every time I ever played a video game, you know, as a kid growing up, it's like if you could figure out a fun exploit. Uh, sometimes that w that was just part of the game and you became to rely on it. So it's something like rocket jumping, right? They could have patched that out of Quake. I mean, patches weren't really a thing back in the day because once you had a game. Um, oh, they're voting on kicking Lumpy. No reasons given. Well, oh, I didn't even get a chance to vote. He's been... They banned him. <laughs> Guys, we better not, we better not mess it's around in this one. They might now. ban us. Um... But yeah, there's all sorts of games that I played as a kid, and it's like, you know, there'd be, oh, like, this little exploit, or, this, you know, this little thing is OP, or, you know, use this little strategy. And it's like, yeah, technically, I guess these days, probably developers would patch it out, you know, to, quote-unquote, fix the game, because that wasn't how the game was intended to be played. But in my mind, if it's fun, and it's, it doesn't break the game, then I kind of like having exploits in a game. So... You know, again, in my in my own game that I'm working on, yeah, there are some things that I legitimately didn't intend, and you could call them exploits. Some little things, little things, nothing huge. But I kind of like that they're there. They're kind of like a little Easter egg or cheat if you're able to figure it out or you notice it, and it can give you a tiny little advantage. So I'm like, you know what? Exploit allowed. I approve of this exploit uh, as a developer. And I feel like exploits are part of video games like in a weird way you know like of course video games you want them to have rules and stuff you don't want it to just be like a, a buggy free-for-all um but there is something about you know an exploit like rocket jumping rocket jumping is a good case in point i don't think the, the developers of quake intended for you to fire a rocket at your own feet not die and jump off a high ledge you're not supposed to get towards but isn't it fun that you can actually do that to the point where um Excuse me. This guy has a lot harder time killing people. I'm used to the big guy who just mows him down with a chain gun. Um, but it's like rocket jumping has now become an official part of how it works uh, in Quake, right? And, and you you do see that in some games where like the in the first or the second game there'll be some exploit people figure out, and then it's just considered part of the game 
for sequels. You know, they intentionally build it in. So I like that rocket jumping here is intentional. It's pretty cool. Come on, buddy. Did I get somebody? What is this guy doing? He's in a bumper car. Oh, I got sniped. You know what? I, that was a gift. I just stood there. <laughs> I, I want to try and be a sniper. Although I feel like the action is so fast I'd probably die. Insane Obama, Zaza. This guy's dancing. I don't know why. I don't know what he has to dance about. Oh, look at that rocket jump. Sick jump, dude. Okay, how do you... What is Battlements? Oh, I always thought this was a dead-end hallway. I could have been going out here the whole time. <coughs> okay, well, now we know. Ow, ow. Oh, there's a guy behind me. Unfair. Yeah, so I think... Um, the fact that I didn't play these games a lot growing up you know, again, because I didn't have, like, the fast enough internet speed or computer. So I didn't play a ton of these, like, arena shooter online games. I'm just really not great at them. Like, it, I just never, I never really got good at them, ever. Um, there's a handful of games that I did play over the years. Rune was one I really liked. That's the one where you run around with a sword and axe and stuff. And I'm pretty sure I've played that on the channel to show off uh, the sort of multiplayer mode. That one is pretty fun. You have duels and stuff with people. And you can get it going like Berserker Rages where it's like you're slaughtering all these people and you're like throwing hammers at people and grabbing swords they drop and beheading the next guy and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, how do we get out of here, guys? I'm lost. No, I went there to the battlements this way. I'll follow Sniper Guy. hey -oh. Okay. Guy tried to follow me, man. Oh, man. Okay, the soldier sucks. How do you change classes? There's a shop? Enable the steam overlay. Now, forget that. Why would you ever... I, I mean, unless it's not cosmetic. Support creator of the frost... Oh, supporting creators. Okay, that, that answers the question. I was going to say, why would you buy anything for a game this old? Okay, here's a question. Cosmetics and games, are they worth paying for, yes or no? I, you can probably guess my thought on this. Emphatic no. Why would you ever pay for a cosmetic item in a game? Maybe you like to pay for cosmetic items. You know, That's why I asked. So yes or no, cosmetic items. Sound off in the comments. This is our poll for today. Cosmetic items. Um, I don't like paying for cosmetic things in real life. Like, not cosmetics. I'm not, like, walking around in full Joker makeup or anything like that day to day. Although that would be pretty funny. But I just mean, like, you know, a shiny hat or, a, a, you know, a cool jacket with spikes. I, 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 I don't know why <laughs> a shiny hat and a cool jacket with spikes. Yeah, because that's what people wear as fashion. Guys, it's been a long day. Um, I just mean... Spending money on things that have no functional value, even outside of video games, is something I don't like to do. So it's things that are just purely for aesthetics, I don't frequently like to buy. It's very rare. Um, let's try this sniper guy, even though I'll probably be bad at it. Okay. I was just seeing if you had to hold the mouse or you could just click it. You just click it, though. But uh, other guys, what is that? Teleporter nice. entrance. Oh, I... What the heck? Okay, where are the bad guys? Oh, he rocket jumped. I can't do that. Okay, I'm just going to support you guys this way. By hanging out here. The problem being a sniper is like... You're, you're an easy target when you're zoomed in. Because an, an enemy sniper could just see you and go pop. Trying to find somebody I can snipe, though. I just want to snipe one person. It'll happen. Just kind of have to be patient. 
Okay, I, I don't even know where the bad guys are in this. Is that something we can kill? No idea. Okay, guys, what are we doing here? Are there enemies on this map? Apparently there are. Come on, man, stick your head out. Oh, God. Everyone moves so fast. I need, like, Gears of War where everyone's, like... I mean, even in that, they don't move super slow, but a little slower. Um, I don't know what's going on there. SMG user. Can you use a different gun? Oh, you totally can. Ah, I see. All right. We seem to be in some sort of, like, German village here. Very nice coastal town here. All right. So, here's an interesting thing we could talk about briefly regarding Valve. What video games has Valve made? Uh, Half-Life, for sure. And that is definitely one of the best games out there. Especially when it first came out, it, it blew my mind. So Half-Life, certainly. Um, is that good or bad? I don't know. I feel like for... Oh, did I get him? I grazed him. Sent him running home to Mama. Um, I feel like with Valve... They're not necessarily a game create. Well, they don't create any games anymore nowadays. They uh, pretty much just run Steam and make a butt ton of money. Oh my god, I got impaled. Nice shot, dude. Respect. Um, yeah, Valve stopped making games a long time ago. I mean, they still make Portal and stuff. But even Portal wasn't their original creation. Um, it was... Um, they bought out an indie team that made a portal game called like Nebuchadnezzar's Drop or something like that. And then they remade it as Portal. And certainly Valve's DNA is all over it with like their style of like comedy and like intelligence and you know it's very Portal is one of my favorite games of all time and Portal 2. But like they didn't necessarily invent it, they just sort of bought it after it was successful. Same with Team Fortress. They didn't make Team Fortress. They just bought it. Same with Dota. Dota also started as a mod for a map. I think it was Warcraft 3. Um, and so Dota 2 is not a mod for Warcraft. It is its own game. And uh, Valve just noticed that everyone liked Dota. So they bought the guy who made Dota. And they were like, hey... We'll give you the resources to just make your own game. We'll call it Dota 2, and it'll be like a standalone game, and we'll make tons of money. The guy who made it was like, shit, yeah, man, let's do it. Uh, and then they did it, and then their dreams came true, right? Like, they made all their money, so... Um, no, I'm not saying this is like a dig at Valve or anything like that, but it, it, it is interesting. Like, if you think of, like, all the games that Valve is known for, like, besides Half-Life... Pretty much everything else, they just sort of find something successful and then buy it and then, like, imp iterate upon it. So I think what Valve is, is they are refiners of games as opposed to creators, if that makes sense. Um, although, again, not, I, I don't want to, like, take away from, like, the creative elements that go into uh, the games they are actually refining. So, um, again, this is not a, a dig at Valve. Oh, I hit that guy. Oh, and he ran home to Mama. I'm gonna send a bunch of bloody dudes back to their moms. Oh god, I missed again. Oh, I'm getting barbecued though. Send this charred corpse back to my mama. Um Yeah, but anyway, the sort of uh whatchamacallit? The refining nature of Valve. I've always thought it's kinda of interesting. Um it reminds me of what people used to tell me about Japan when I was in university, which is that, you know, Japan, you know, didn't invent a lot of the electronics they're known for. They didn't invent the cars that they're known for. What Japan is, like, really good at doing is taking existing technology and just refining 
the mother lifting the F out of it. <laughs> and, like, just, you know, that's why Japan produced the best electronics and the best cars in, like, the 80s and stuff. Because they, like, refine that technology down to a sharp samurai's edge. Um, and so, in many ways, I feel like Valve is similar. But, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think of my hot take there? This hot take for the day. Still waiting to know what you guys think of uh, cosmetics in games. Time, Worth it or not? I will admit I have purchased some cosmetics in games. Despite the fact that I say, eh, it's not worth it. I definitely haven't never done it. I did it a little bit. I won't tell you which game. I'm not going to cop to it. So forget it if that's what you're waiting for. Oh, come on. They're right there. Come on. And they're distracted. Now's my time to shine. I can't get a clear shot. Everyone's just moving around like they're on cocaine, man. That guy's beaming the other guy. Giving him little pleasant zaps, I think, that's motivating him during combat or something. Oh, he's healing him. That's what it is. Well, that makes sense. Oh, did I get him? No, I think I pulled my trigger at the last second. Come on, man. I suck. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. Okay, I'm not meant to be a sniper in this game. They're all way, way too fast. You have to have the reflexes of, like, a demon. I can't even hit them when they're out in the open. Oh, my God. On the other side, they're probably like, Dude, I just dodged three sniper shots. I'm so good. It's like, no, I'm just that bad. Glad I could boost your confidence, though, fellas. All right. Disconnect. Not only is disconnecting good for making friends online, because everybody likes it when you do it, I find that it's also a noble way to end a match. You know, if an enemy is about to defeat you, the best thing to do is just turn your computer off right away so they don't get the satisfaction of actually beating you. I think that's the most noble way to end any match. So. <laughs> Your casual match is ready. Joining in six, five, four, three, two. Are you ready? This is going to be so casual, you won't even feel like you're playing a match. Most of these guys are just chatting, using leech speak. They're not even attacking one another. Imagine if there was, like, competitive, casual, and then, like, super cash. Where it was a match where it's like you go in, guys are just like standing in the open, like cycling their weapons, like chit-chatting with guys in the enemy team. Nobody's really that intent on even playing the game. Nobody, most people don't even realize they're in a game. There's an old lady Betsy running around, you know, like offering like cookies and tea to people. She's this guy. Would anyone like some cookies? That's what I want. That's what I... If I ever make a 3D shooter, that'll be my next project after Battle Marks. And we're going to have a super cash mode. Where it's like you press trigger and the game doesn't even guarantee that anything's going to happen. It's like 50-50 every time. Alright, let's go. Get the briefcase from the enemy basement. Well, let's do it, man. Am I just going to die from fire? Well, I got in the enemy base really easily. This guy's really fast. Question is, what do I do now? Battlements. Oh, intelligence. Oh, that guy was on my team? Wait, what color am I? Okay, I am red. <laughs> well, I can't be expected to keep track of color. What the hell? What if I was colorblind? This game's unplayable. Fatal flaw. <coughs> Make your teams look different, man. You know what would be kind of interesting? Here's an idea for uh, a game. 
is humans versus aliens. We're like, you're on the human side and you have to kill the aliens who, uh, you know, are like stealing all the resources of Earth. But on the other team, the people who are playing that team, they're the humans and you're the aliens. And it's the same match, you know? It's just that the enemy team to you looks like aliens and you look like the good guys and vice versa. That way when you're playing, you always just kill the aliens and you are always the humans. But you are playing against other humans who see you as aliens. You see what I'm saying? It's genius. That guy's a fish on his head. It's uh, not only a good game mechanic, because then you never have to pay attention to what color you are, but it's a metaphor as well about the monsters we see our enemies as when we're often just as bad, you know? It really makes you think. You know what? I don't like that scout guy. Okay, we're gonna go into one more match and I'm gonna go back to old Beefcakes himself. The big meatloaf in the middle with the chain gun. Whatever his name is, I don't... I guess they all have a name. There's like soldier, spy. Why didn't I just click join now? That's weird. That's weird that it's like, your match is found. Here's a countdown. Oh, click here if you just want to actually get in your match. Did, did you want to join your match? Because there's a join button. You could just wait 10 seconds or click to join. It, whatever you want. We don't want to pressure you one way or the other. Okay, this guy is... Mission begins well, he doesn't have a name. There's the offensive classes and the defensive classes. And the support classes. I think this guy's the spy, and this guy's the medic, I guess, actually. I don't know if I'd want to go to a doctor if he showed up with a giant gun like that. He's like, all right, bend over. Let's do this. Let's do this checkup, man. All we do at this office is prostates. Nothing but prostates. Cindy, get the gun! Get the butt gun! We got another guy here. Well, at least I make myself laugh. Okay, let's find some enemies. Now, what, importantly, I think I'm blue. What the hell? That guy's really blue. Wait, what is happening? Wait, who's... Okay, I think I'm red, actually. Am I red? I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I respawn. Okay. Oh, in the bottom left. Yeah, I'm red. Okay, I should have been shooting those blue guys. I just thought, you know, eh, it's casual. It was a casual match. I, I you know, what? I didn't want to, like, ruffle their feathers. Just trying to be a good uh, online citizen. This, guy's all, this guy looks like Sabat from uh, Street Fighter 2. Follow him. Come on, you want some? They'll never know I'm coming. Oh god, Al. Well, I killed the sniper at least. Did I get him? I don't think I did. I think I just got killed. I defended the Borneo capture point, though. Borneo capture point three, defended by Jay. I thought that was like coffee or something. Oh, it's uh, steroids. Juice up and get out there, boys. Gate one. How do you run in this? Maybe you can't. All right, they, this is basically like Overwatch, where they're trying to like get this thing across the uh, map. Oh, yeah, I just got killed. Yeah, I'm never good at this. I'd be more upset, but it's like my first time playing. Like, and I'm not very good at these games in general. 
Um, I think that does it for me. It, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, honestly, um, Team Fortress 2 here, it is a huge, 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 blah, 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 hugely popular game. It was a very big deal when it came out. People are still playing it. I mean, like, you know, very, like, everyone's heard of Team Fortress. Um, as far as these, like, online shooter games go, like, if you want, like, a team-based, goal-based shooter with some cool mechanics and stuff, like, I've definitely watched videos where people troll people, uh, jeez, um, being the spy and stuff like that, and it's pretty funny. So, it's like, there's some fun videos online, and people are really good at this, and people like it. It's not for me. Not because I don't think it's a good game, just because I'm really bad at it, and... I don't know, I'm just, I guess I'm, I've never been motivated to learn. Um, you know what's interesting, too? I bet when I say that, some people will be writing in the comments, oh, it's not that hard, like, here's some tips, blah, 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 blah. But I'm like, no, you don't get it. Like, I don't want to learn. Like, I'm not, and not like because I'm like, well, this game sucks, you know, F Team Fortress. I'm like, just not driven to play it, you know. Like, there's certain kinds of games and certain games that I really get into and I really like to play and I want to get good at. And then others, I don't. Um, and you might say, oh, but Team Fortress 2, you got to play because of this reason. It's like, I could probably list 10 games that I would say the same to you. And you'd be like, eh, eh, I, actually, I don't know about that. So, um, I think to each his own, to each his own. And ultimately, if you want a team-based shooter, uh, Valve makes really good games. This game is very well regarded, even to this day. It is still playable. It is still fun. Guys, do you have fond memories of Team Fortress 2? What made this game awesome and special and fun to you back in the day? Or do you still even play it? Maybe you play it. Sound off in the comments down below and, uh, tell me what you think of Team Fortress. But this has been my, uh, hot take. And hopefully my gameplay at least made you laugh. <laughs> because it didn't impress you, I can tell you that much. Um, until we meet again, guys, you all take care of yourselves, and, uh, stay frosty. We'll catch you in the next one. Until next time, my friends, peace! Ooh la la.